Hey, what's up everybody? Um, this is your monthly mentoring session with Ryan Payne. As always, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And just a little background on myself, I'm not sure if you're new to the organization or not, but basically I run a wealth management firm out of New York and Philadelphia. So any questions that have to do with investing, wealth management, or just business building in general, I built my business from the ground up, um, I'm definitely happy to ask. And we got some questions this month, so why don't we dwell into them as I bring them up here. And the first question that comes in for the month is from Oscar Rodriguez. He writes in, hi mentor, as I'm getting my business going, creating initial income, how do you recommend for me to start paying myself? And just a little background here, um, Oscar's in the used car sale business. Uh, should I pay myself from each sale I do? Is there a formula or percentage I should put aside from each sale for overhead and pay myself? Thank you. Well, I think you need to get a feel for what your overhead is. Um, just to give you an idea of what we do at our business, maybe you can apply the same formula, is we pay ourselves quarterly. Uh, we're a partnership, so I'm not sure exactly how you're structured. And every quarter, what we do is we take money out of the business and basically try to keep enough in for expenses. So what you might want to do is maybe just go through a quarter, um, keep the money in the business, see what's left over, and whatever's left over, uh, you know, maybe take a little bit less to give you some cushion in the business, uh, you could take as your income on a quarterly basis. But that might be a good way to monitor it because I'm guessing with car sales, like it's probably not like in neat lines, you sell this many cars a month, it probably is like up and down. Um, so on a quarterly basis, you can kind of see where you're at and maybe take a distribution. But I would say like, just like with your personal finances, you probably want to keep a cushion in the business, especially if you're in a business where the sales aren't linear, meaning like, you know, it's sporadic. You can have some good months, bad months. And then after 12 months, you can kind of average it out and get a feel for like how much roughly in cars you sell a year, what's the revenue um, that your business is generating, and then offset that by like what your liabilities are roughly. And then the difference between the two, then you know like, okay, but I wanna keep a little cushion in the business, six months worth of expenses minus that out, and then the rest is what you can take. And then again, maybe do that on a quarterly basis. So it kind of smooths things out a little bit because again, it's not like you're in a business where you're just like, oh yeah, it's like an annuity. Every month I have so much cash flow coming in. So. That's a way to probably do that. If you have more questions on that um, in this Facebook Live below, feel free to, to ask more questions or ping me and we can talk a little deeper about it. Uh, next question that comes in is from Yolindi Degovia. I hope I'm spending it. Are you pronouncing your last name? I might be butchering it. Uh, she asks, I, like, I feel like I need to stop. Go back and restart with the basics. I had already started my business when I joined AO and I don't have the basic foundation and processes down. Where do you recommend I start? I need a clear vision, a roadmap, and projections on where I'm going and how to get there. And a little background here for you, Lindy, is we manufacture decorative throw pillows and pillow inserts. The potential for growth is huge. We currently do around 15K a month, but I need at least double that or triple that. I can't scale haphazardly. This needs to be very calculated and planned. And her elevator pitch is this, we're a mother-daughter team that designs and creates custom decorative pillow throws uh, for home and business branding. Well, first off, 15K a month, congratulations. That's like a great start. So I would not um, discount what a great job you've done so far. One thing to consider here is business is always haphazard. Um, you know, it's not neat, it's messy. And it sounds like through ever planning you've done, lack of planning, you've made it so that you're creating about 15K a month in revenue, which is just phenomenal. So there's obviously parts of your businesses, excuse me, <coughs> as I uh, lose my voice here, um, excuse me again, we need an intermission here. Um, but what I'm trying to say here is there's probably a lot of things in your business that are actually working. So I don't think it's about starting from scratch. I think it's about evaluating where you are now and, you know, start looking at what's working and discern discerning like what's not working. Uh, I think it's a better way to do it. I mean, like when you put that kind of pressure on yourself of like, I need to scale at this level and everything needs to be perfect. Well, good luck with that. Right. Like I've learned from business, like it's always messy and there's never some like perfect formula that you can apply 
you're dealing with people when it comes to business, you're dealing with all the irrationalities, the volatility. So there's always something to fine tune. So I think it's just about where am I now? Um, and how can I hone in on my processes better, right? That's really what it's about. Like you obviously have processes in place. You're obviously doing a lot of things right. So it's kind of like, how do I sharpen the saw? I think is a better way to look at it. Um, and when it comes to scalability, like in all fairness, yes, maybe some of your process have to be gutted, right? Like some things have to be done from scratch um, or they need to be more scalable. Like with my business, you know, we do wealth management, financial planning, and, you know, a lot of our business is very proposal intensive because there's a lot of people that want us to look at what they're doing right now, do an analysis on it, and then from there decide like, oh, I want to work with this firm or I don't. So I can, I've talked about this actually in past Facebook lives, but, you know, I used to be a point where I would just hand do all of these um, proposals. Like I like sit there and do it by hand, which is fine. Like, you know, if I had volume of, let's say I was doing five proposals, six proposals a month, it wasn't that big a deal. I could sit down a couple hours, do a proposal. So over the month, maybe, you know, it took me like a couple days out of the month, put these proposals together, not a big deal. But when we started scaling up, we actually had a business partner that started referring us business. We went from like six proposals on a monthly basis to like 15. Okay, so obviously me doing these proposals by hand, that didn't work anymore, right? That became really, really arduous. I didn't have time to do anything else. That process was effed, for lack of a better way of putting it. So here's a perfect example where, you know, look, business was coming in great and I had to redesign the processes. So maybe, you know, that's another thing you want to look at right now. Actually, I recommend you do this is just look at where the inefficiencies are that will allow you to scale up because that's the thing is like you might have a blueprint or a business model right now that's conducive for 15,000 a month, but not for 45,000 a month. Um, but again, I don't think like starting everything from scratch is the way to do it per se, but I think there probably are parts of your business that like you have to hone in on, see where the inefficiencies are. And in those cases, then yes, you can, you can redo those platforms. So I think what you want to ask yourself, uh, now the more I'm thinking about this and I'm articulating this is the question you want to ask yourself is whatever process it is, is it as effective if I triple my business? If I have triple the volume coming in, is the actual structure and architecture of my business able to handle that now? If the answer is yes, then let it go. You know, keep moving on. If it's no, then yes, you've got to reconfigure. You've got to rethink uh, essentially how you're doing that part of the business. And I always use the metaphor or analogy of like the conveyor belt, right? Like you want to think about it, like how do you put everything on a conveyor belt, like in a factory where everything can kind of be repeatable, a process that's scalable. In fact, a really good book on this that kind of changed my whole paradigm in business. It's called Built to Sell. I forget the name of the author. Short book, easy read, but it talks about essentially this business owner's journey from working in his business to proverbial working on his business and, you know, thinking about things more along the lines of, I like to use this analogy too, I've used it in past Facebook lives, but like the Starbucks analogy, um, you know, essentially if you're the CEO of Starbucks, like you're not handing out the, uh, the coffee, you're not a barista in your business, right? Like, you know, if you're Har Howard, uh, Howard Schultz, you're not like, I'm not going to see Howard in, in the local, uh, you know, Seattle Starbucks, maybe he comes once in a while and checks it out. But I mean, the point is, like something like that where it's just like a completely large scale operation and you can do this on a smaller scale like you know with the idea that you're going to do it on a bigger scale but you want you want to create that kind of scalability um that a starbucks does or any big business does like i love that movie uh the one on mcdonald's that came out a couple of years ago i forget what it was called but it was about ray Kroc. um i can't remember the name of it but point is it was a really good movie in the sense that like you know, Ray Kroc took over McDonald's. It was just like the McDonald's brothers. And they had this like very niche business in California of making burgers. He took that business and essentially, you know, he franchised it out. He, he built all these processes in place and just made it a huge empire. And there's this scene, and I think I may have talked about this before, but like they're sitting at a basketball court and they're using chalk and then they're just building, you know, the entire process at how it's all going to work soup to nuts um, making it a conveyor belt or assembly line with putting the hamburgers together. 
and making that repeatable at every different hamburger shop, right? So I think that's the mindset. I think I like the fact that you're thinking this way, um, but I think you know there's two sides of the coin here. Yes, rejigger your processes, but on the other hand, like you know, you're doing some things right. Some things are going well. They don't need to be re-triggered or rejiggered. And in addition to that, like the other side of this is, um, you know, business is going to be messy always, right? It's never going to work so perfect. And I would like say, like, don't put so much pressure on yourself that like, I have to do it this way. It has to be perfect. Nothing in business is perfect. It's always an experiment. And then the last point that I'll make about this, I think is really important in business. I made this mistake. I made this mistake like many times is you want to like basically do something on a smaller scale first. So if you have a new process and you want to try it, I hate the idea of if you build it, they will come like, you know, like field of dreams, you know, you don't want to build this big stadium and hope everybody comes. You want to try these new processes on a smaller scale. And if it works, then you can leverage up and do it on a bigger scale. And that's the other thing too. Like if you are going to re uh, configure your processes, try it on a smaller scale first. Cause the stakes are high here. Like you're saying, I need to get to this double, triple my revenue and I can't screw it up. Well, the first thing is don't go all in on, don't go all in on anything. Start with a smaller scale. And then if it's working, it looks good. Then you can, you can leverage up on that scalability. So that's like another important point. Um, which we've learned in my business, like numerous times, like at one point I started a hedge fund cause I thought I had a brilliant idea. Turned out like the hedge fund was not a, the strategy that actually kind of sucked. Um, and I put all this money into it for clients and it didn't work out that well. Uh, but the point is like, if had I just tried it on a smaller scale to see if it really worked or not, um, I would have learned a much less expensive lesson that like, oh, this is not a great pro this is not a great idea to do this hedge fund. So, you know, uh, many mistakes like that. Um, and I'll probably make more mistakes like that in the future. But well, the one thing I've learned is it's not if they build it, if you build it, they will come. It's like try small, smaller scale. If it's working, then leverage it up. So hopefully you find that valuable. Okay, last question comes in from Dan Razumovsky. I think I'm saying that correctly. Dan writes in, how much should I sell? Uh, how much should I sell 20% of my business for? What are the questions I should review from this new partnership? Okay, a little description on Dan's business. I have a person I've worked with and he wants to buy 20% of my company. He will be a managing partner. He will take over all logistics and the operations of the business. I will focus on the sales and growth. This will explode my business. This will also save me lots of headaches on getting projects done. Elevator pitch. I'm looking to grow my exterior contracting, excuse me, exterior contracting company to a thousand or excuse me, a million dollars in profitable sales. I'm looking to open more locations once all implemented systems are work. Looking to extend to large loss insurance claims 100K plus in government contracts. Right now, it's a veteran owned business. Well, thank you. You know, I salute you as a veteran. We, we appreciate uh, your service for the country. And okay, so Dan, a couple questions here. First off, like, you know, I'm very hard pressed to give up equity, um, you know, without a lot of careful thought around it. You know, first off, it, just, it may be already discussed equity, that's the only option here, but if you haven't even gotten there yet, um, I'm always very reluctant to talk about equity. You know, maybe down the line when the company's doing really, really well and you have someone who's a partner, a true partner, and you wanna compensate them and they're already like invested in the business, I think equity is great. But if you can get around that upfront, I would always like go for compensation, maybe tied to performance ideally, versus equity if you can get away with not giving up equity because I've just seen so many disasters where someone gave up equity too quick, they have this new partner, they think they're gonna be great, they don't do jack and all of a sudden they own 20% of your company or whatever it happens to be. Now, if you already had that conversation, you're already down the line on this and like that's not gonna work, well, okay, so let's talk about option B, but let's put that caveat out there first. Like don't give equity, especially not upfront, maybe after years, you're like, this employee it deserves it. They've been here, they're invested, yes. But again, we'll just say in this situation, you have to give up the equity. Um, I think the first thing is like, maybe get your business valued by an outside party. Like find out what the typical multiples are. Um, you know, typically it's done on your profitability, right? It's, it's actually gonna be uh, on EBITDA. It's not gonna be on your top line revenue, but it's gonna be on the actual profits of the business. 
And, you know, you also, the other side of that is like, can they afford to buy into this, right? So you got to make it at a price where like, it's actually affordable for the other person too. But, you know, I think if you want to do it right, I would get an outside party to figure that out. Because I mean, all this stuff is hypothetical now. You might have found the best partner in the world, but you know, really the rubber hasn't met the road yet. You have no idea if this is just gonna like skyrocket your business. Sounds like you have a good feeling about it, um, which is great, but I found in life and business, um, it doesn't always necessarily turn out the way you think it's gonna turn out. So I would kind of like, you know, the you seem like a little I'm just judging by this, maybe you're a little bit enamored with like the potential. Um, but the reality is we don't know how it's actually going to pan out. So, you know, I would think, I would think with a really, again, on the equity piece, um, you know, I would think about it with a hard, cold eye, um, maybe get someone else to value the business. If you're like definitely set on giving this person an equitable, an equity stake in your business. But I think again, this is like something you've got to do it without the rosy colored sunglasses on. Um, you have no idea if this partnership is going to work out. Um, you don't know if this is really going to skyrocket your business. I mean, there's a good chance it will. That's why I think a lot of the, the compensation is better on the back end when you know it's working and you know that it's, it's really rocking. Um, but I think that's what I would do if like, you have to sell a piece of the business. That's the only way it's going to work is I would get an idea of what the business would be worth right now by an outside party. And that's some number that you're coming up with arbitrarily, but a third party. So it's like a realistic number. Um, and then from there, depending on like his cash flow, like does he buy out over time or, or however you want to work that. But again, just a caveat, I know a lot of businesses where equity was given up too quickly and it's a disaster later when it doesn't work out. Not to like bum you out, but I think that's something you got to be really aware of. And business owners like a lot of times don't do that because you're like, oh, someone's going to take all my burdens and problems away. Again, you just don't know that yet. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the chat section of this. Um, other than that, like, I don't know if anyone's even watching this right now, but if you are, um, if you want to ask a question, like here's the time to do it, I would say do it now. And if not, um, hope you found this valuable. And again, if you have any questions, just like, you know, put it in the comment section of this Facebook Live. I'll definitely get back to you. As always, enjoy doing these mentoring sessions and uh, everyone have a great day. Thank you.